Hi, welcome to Daddy Kerb's farm. Putting a few screws in the uh, chicken tractor. This is our first chicken tractor. Uh, not sure about the design yet. We're going to figure that out, but that's not what this video is about. We're going to be um, taking a walk through the garden and some of the things that I have going on because I feel like a lot has happened. I haven't done enough update videos to keep you guys informed about what's going on here on the farm. So this area right here of the farm, it's got our chicken coops and our sheds and our gardens. This is kind of the business area of um, our entire operation. I do have the orchard, you've seen that. It's in the very front. Um, we have a total of five and a half acres, but most of what happens on the Daddy Kerbs farm is right here. We got chickens and ducks and goats and gardens. Um, all of that in this very small area. Basically, we could do everything we do on probably two acres because most of what we do is done on less than two acres. But let's go ahead and walk over here. I want to show you uh, some of the things that are, are new. One of them is this little swale. I dug this swale and mounded up the berm because we get a lot of water flow that comes kind of in front of the garden and then it flows up toward the front of the property and I wanted to interrupt that uh, so that we could create this little garden area and you can even see the water seeping through the water that's there is because we left the hose on last night by accident it was on a very slow trickle so we didn't really notice it but it trickled all night long and we caught all of it in that swale which is kind of good because instead of it being lost it's actually going into this little system where eventually we're going to have uh, plants and then some ground cover and maybe some gardens uh, with the swing here as the uh, centerpiece. So between the two gardens, this, this decorative relaxing garden and the food garden is that uh, where you see the ducks crossing through and the compost, that's going to be kind of like the alleyway between two gardens. That's our uh, area where we're going to continue our uh, compost operation but here again I planted a loquat tree and I had to protect it from the goats so it's surrounded by uh, wire fencing and at first I used that big wire fencing the field fencing and the goats stuck their head right through it I don't know what I was thinking so I had to cover it up with the chicken wire then we have um, some seeds planted in here which is why they're it's covered with wire fencing so the chickens don't scratch it up and you notice uh, the goats and the chickens getting in things. Uh, the chicken tractor is actually part of our solution to uh, keep the chickens out of things. We're going to experiment over the next year or so with keeping the chickens in tractors so that we can do a few things. One, keep them uh, contained but on pasture. We're going to move them uh, on a daily basis to, to new areas but also it will keep them out of our, our gardens and our flower gardens. And we have the desire to breed a couple of them. And when they're all just kind of together, you can't really breed them because, well, there's just too much genetics going all in at one time. So we need to separate them out and um, put only those together that we intend to breed. Uh, a lot of those, we, a lot of the chickens we will not breed, but there's a few of them that we're very interested in breeding. I have the, the meat chicken experiment, which I've hinted to over the last year several times, and that's where I have the, the Freedom Ranger hens, and I have a black Cornish rooster and a Freedom Ranger rooster. So I'm going to breed some of them to the black Cornish and some of them to the Freedom Ranger, and we're going to see if the hybrid to hybrid is the desired meat chicken or if the hybrid to a black Cornish would be more desirable uh, based on growth rate and um, you know size and all that. But anyway, this is about gardens. So the uh, everything's a little bit of a mess. It's been raining. It's sloppy. Uh, we've been working, trying to keep things up. So we got fencing and and buckets and everything everywhere. But this this garden, you saw me uh, plant. Gosh, it's been uh, four months ago now, I guess. Uh, back in December. This was the garlic, and this fencing is there now because we had a hard time keeping the chickens and the goats out of this. Uh, every once in a while, we'll let the goats out to range, 
and if you're not watching them they're going to go exactly where you don't want them and they would jump up in here and they would eat the garlic and they would compact this with their hooves and so now we're missing half of our garlic so this is protecting the garlic and uh, if you look over in front of the green shed that's where some of the buckets a bunch of buckets for tomatoes some of them are over there in front of the green shed that's where they're going to be for this season and then i have some of them over here in front of the garden on this side you can see a few of them here in the yellow buckets some of them are inside and then some of them are on the outside over here and then i also have a lot inside so I told you this was going to be about gardens. Let's actually get in one. Now that we're in the main Daddy Curbs garden here, uh, I wanted to go ahead and show you these front beds. This is where most of the tomato production in the garden is happening. We have uh, three beds with tomatoes in rows. They're all on the northern side of the beds. And then on the southern sides of the beds, I have rows of, uh, I think I have cucumbers and squash, and this one was a zucchini, a gray zucchini, and um, we didn't have a full germination there. Only two plants came up, but that's okay. But each of these beds are going to have these metal posts, and the tomatoes, as they grow, are going to be um, strung up between these posts. So. I'll just tie on a string, wrap it around, come back and tie it off. As they grow a little more, I'll do that again. So that's these main beds here. Oh, and some of the things I have, I don't want to pass things up. Uh, over here, I decided to go ahead and plant some of my amaranth in here. I had um, two very strong amaranth plants last season. All of these are seeds from that and I have amaranth in several places in the garden. I thought I'd go ahead and put some in this location. This is very rich composted soil. And then over here is uh, the moringa trees, which I'm extremely excited about because uh, moringa is such a, um, a healthy tree. It has lots of nutritional value. And last winter I decided, because they were probably you know this tall, to cut them off I wasn't sure if that was the right thing to do or not, and um, I thought I killed them. But here they are, coming back. They look pretty healthy. Put them in these fabric pots. I keep them moist, and they're looking good. I had a, a nibble off of a, some of the leaves yesterday. It's an interesting flavor. I don't know if you've ever had Moringa, but they're supposed to have loads and loads of nutrition. Uh, when you chew the leaves, at first it's just like, yeah, you know, you're chewing like kind of a bland lettuce, but the more you chew it, it gets kind of spicy. It, 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 it's kind of tangy in your mouth. It's an interesting flavor. Then between these two moringas right here is one of my grape uh, vines, grape plants. And it's looking like it's growing up pretty well. I had to put this on the outside, this, uh, this metal cage, because the goats were reaching through and the ducks reaching through and eating all my grapevine leaves. And here's a few of the tomatoes. These are uh, German Johnson. I only ended up with three of those. Just on the outside is a rose bush that we had taken out of um, the entrance, what used to be the old entrance to the garden. We're gonna reopen that at some point. Those wooden gates they, they've been closed off for years and we're going to reopen them because it will be more convenient to come into the garden from the house. But this uh, rose bush was in the way. So I cut it out and I put it in the buckets and we're hoping it lives so we can put it somewhere else. Then here's another grape. And on the outside I put chicken wire so the ducks, uh, the goose mostly, the goose and the goats can't reach through and eat the, uh, that there. More tomatoes on the outside. My asparagus looking lovely here. And I put the cage around the asparagus because what happens with the asparagus is it gets so tall and then it falls over and it shades everything. So I wrap the cage around it to kind of just hold it up. 
Then this bed is full of tomato cages, uh, but there's no tomatoes in here. On the very end are two peppers, and all these little plants in the middle are cantaloupe. Two seasons ago, I started cantaloupe in one of the other beds, and I put them on these cages, and it, it, uh, it works out pretty well. It's probably not my preferred method, uh, but when you have uh, an open bed like this and you have things that are going to be uh, needing trellised, things that aren't going to get 10 feet tall, but they just need some support, putting a series of tomato cages in and just letting them kind of grow up over it, and then you can train them as they grow up to kind of hang over portions of these tomato cages and you can keep the, uh, the fruit off the ground that way. And I haven't shown you the potatoes in a while, but oh my goodness. Check out all these potatoes. These are the white potatoes in the fabric pots. And over the last uh, month or so, since I did the last potato video, I've just been adding soil to the tops of the bags until they're full. So all these bags are now full and these plants are just looking amazing. They are getting a bit of damage from the pill bugs. The pill bugs really love to eat. Um, I know this has been a little debated in the past by people and some even now will suggest that they do not eat greens, live greens, but they do. They, they're all over them and they destroy these leaves. Uh, I've, I've caught them in the act numerous times because I've been told that it just doesn't happen like that and so I keep trying to convince myself, is it really the pill bugs? And it really is. The pill bugs really are eating my greens. I have beets in the, the bed where I showed you that the, the round bed with the, uh, the garlic. I put beets in there and the pill bugs, as soon as they would sprout, they would eat them all up. So I'm not gonna get any beets out of that bed. Down this middle aisle, uh, is where I have uh, some of the uh, the fruit trees that I, I didn't get put in the orchard earlier this year. I have the wild apple and the mayhaw. The mayhaw trees, I thought they were dead. I mean, only in the last three or four days or so have they started getting leaves. And so they're, they're alive. They're coming out. So I'm happy about that. Over here are some cuttings that I'm experimenting with. These are peach trees from a friend's tree. And then these are the blackberry plants that you saw me cut off of my mother plant. And they are just looking gorgeous. They are gonna be wonderful. Directly next door here is the uh, hot pepper bed from last season. Five out of my six plants stayed alive through the winter and I'm getting lots of nice green coming out on those so I expect lots of hot peppers this year and also in the middle are these carrots that I planted last year and those were experimental carrots to see if I could get seeds off of them so uh, carrots only produce seed after the first season I don't know if it's every two years or only after the first season I'm not sure but the, this is the second season for these plants so I'm hoping that they produce some seed that I could uh, then turn around and plant in my garden. So, let's see here. This is a bed that I've been kind of resting. I put a lot of compost and material in here last season and I haven't used it as much as some of the other beds because uh, partly I, I just wanna observe the soil, uh, how it kind of uh, breaks down and reacts without a lot of um, gardening. I just want to see how the soil reacts. So some of that empty space is on purpose just because I want to observe that. Over here you may recognize these plants. These are the pomegranate plants that I did by cuttings. Early on I thought I had 100% success because I had leaves on everything. Now several people in the comments have said that the, the leaves do not indicate roots. Okay, I'm sure you're right because some of them appear to be dying. So I did not have roots. I just had enough moisture to keep those leaves alive for a while and even produce new little leaves for a while. But uh, 
So it looks like I might get about 50% success, which has been my success on most of my cuttings, about 50%. Is that pumpkin? Nope, that's dopey. Uh, but what I did to help me keep some moisture in here was my son had uh, done a cleanup for somebody where he went to someone's ranch and he, he helped them clean up a bunch of material. <clears throat> and he found this old tank. It was a, um, uh, a water tank, a freshwater holding tank and an RV. When he brought it home and it's got all the hoses in the end of it and everything. And I had thought that I was gonna try to use it as a water holding tank, but I just couldn't figure out where I needed this size and shape of a water holding tank. So I thought I would just use it as a place to put these pots down in here and it will hold a little bit of water and uh, will allow for these pots to wick up from the bottom. So it helps me keep these, these pots more moist easier and since it has um, a hole down here with a hose I can easily drain off some of it or I can lift that hose up and hold more water if I want to and this is my oak tree that I promised myself and I may have even said it on video but several times I have promised to get this thing planted and I still haven't so please stay alive I want to show you this over here. Uh, I'm, I'm really interested and excited when I can propagate something. Uh, I'm sure I don't have all the best methods. Uh, a lot of what I do, you know, like I said, I get about 50% success. But here's another one of the lemon trees. Come over here. <clears throat> this was just a lemon branch that uh, we had cut off because I pruned the lemon. And can you see that there? This has been in here now for probably six months and I'm getting these little buds, little flowers. It hasn't produced any leaves, which is interesting, but uh, after being in here for six months and getting that kind of growth, that lets me know that this is probably taking root and it's gonna be another successful lemon tree. In the firewood bed on the end of the garden here, we have onions there's kind of an empty spot there that I haven't decided what's going in there then we have onions and arugula uh, the arugula was just me throwing out some seeds from last season and it's come up beautifully in fact it's all starting to go to seed uh, if you can if you can see this in here all these seed pods those are going to break open and create a lot of seeds it's going to um, uh, make this bed go into the next season. I'm going to try to collect some of those so I can either give some seeds away or put them in different locations. The wire, again, like, like on the asparagus, is just to keep it pushed up because it wants to fall over everywhere. And my Swiss chard that I have been thoroughly enjoying, uh, I cook it like spinach and put it on top of soups or stir fry or anything like that. Those are wonderful uh, greens. Right next door to the Swiss chard is the lettuce bed. I had some extra seeds and I decided to just throw them out and see if I could get a little extra harvest out of this small section of garden. And the lettuce is just doing beautifully. Makes for great salads. And our strawberries that we moved, I think they like this spot. We're getting strawberries, we're getting uh, red berries. We're fighting the roly-polies a little bit. You can see right there where they've eaten a little piece out of that. So that's a little frustrating. They're everywhere and they eat lots of, lots of stuff. But this is a nice little corner for the strawberries. Pretty excited about that. My lemon tree. Oh my goodness, I wish you could smell this. When you walk by this and you're just just by walking by you create a little bit of a airflow and just the aroma of the sweet lemon off these flowers is amazing and i'm going to get a lot of fruit or at least a lot of fruit started on this this year some of it will fall off it's kind of that natural way of the fruit selecting itself but lots of little lemons starting there and it smells wonderful then i have more amaranth here 
you see these leaves this this is this is what amaranth leaves are supposed to look like and this is what they look like when you have a bunch of pill bugs i really have a pill bug problem and they're in there just kind of taking their sunday afternoon nap right now i need a resident toad oh i got a spider i wonder I wonder if they eat pill bugs. That would be really cool if they did. Oh, if if spiders eat pill bugs, he needs to invite all his cousins to come stay in my garden. And we're almost done. We're almost done. So, this is Luke's garden bed. Luke loves his garden. He wants to come out and water his garden and plant seeds in his garden all the time. Every day. Can we water the garden? Can we water the garden? And sometimes I have to tell him, no, we're not going to water the garden because it rained. We don't need to do that. So uh, his chives look beautiful and he loves uh, checking his chives out and watering them. And then he's got some flowers and a few seeds that he's put in. I think he has some cantaloupe coming up. And we trimmed back his uh, sugar snap pea because we planted a tomato in the middle. He's been asking for months if he can have a tomato tree and finally we decided to put the tomato back in his garden in the middle of this cage and we wanted to clean up some of that sugar snap pea so that the tomato would have lots of room to grow he's got a, a little pea plant back here not pea beans just like he does back here too and you saw the uh looks watering can you saw the potatoes in the bags. I kind of have a, a battle of the potatoes going on. I have potatoes in the bed and potatoes in the bags. These are red potatoes and those are white potatoes. And um, the intention on this bed was that I was going to put another wood box layer and I was going to put the um, more soil in there and I still can and I probably still will. But I get busy and I don't get things done all the time. And these potatoes didn't want to wait for me, so they just shot way up. They're looking beautiful. And so far, I don't see any potatoes coming out of the ground or anything. So I don't think I'm going to have that big of a problem, even if I decide not to, to add the extra soil. I know that uh, Ray over at the Praxis channel, Praxis 55712, you guys all know Ray. Uh, he plants his potatoes and walks away from them. He doesn't do any hilling or anything. And it works fine for him, and I suspect it will work fine for me too. Uh, just the, the concept of, of covering the potatoes so that they don't get exposed to light, and also uh, providing extra area for more root structure for a healthier plant. I'm sure it works both ways. Oh, remember the mystery plant? <laughs> It took a little while for me to figure out. I almost pulled them out because I thought they were weeds and I showed them in that video. I said, hey guys, I got something growing here that I just can't figure out. Some of you guessed artichoke and there were a few other names. I had no idea. I don't remember planting these, but now I'm sure you recognize it's poppies. They lost all the flowers already, but they get these seed heads. And when these seed heads dry out, uh, the tops open up almost like a little salt and pepper shaker so you can take them the seeds rattle around inside that hollow bulb and the top opens up so that you can shake the seeds out like a shaker and uh, so these will fall over the seeds will fall on the ground and I'll have more poppies now I'm gonna collect these before that happens but I just thought it was pretty exciting to end up with poppies in my garden and I just don't ever remember planting poppies the neighbor grows a lot of poppies so it's quite possible that a bird you know carried them over or whatever something but here they are and I'm gonna have loads and loads of seeds that I can plant poppies on other places in the garden hey dopey dopey really likes hanging out in the garden I don't blame him I like it too in fact that's one of the reasons I ordered this shirt from Wayne Metter at the uh, Incredible Ink 
I might get it wrong, Wayne, but I think it's incredibleink.com. Uh, you can check him out at uh, Wayne Metter has a YouTube channel and a world for change. He operates that and also he's on Google Plus and Facebook different places But he has now a printing business and he creates these t-shirts and I'd rather be in my garden Because most of the time I would rather be in my garden. That's why I ordered the shirt so I'm really glad that I have the opportunity to invite you into my garden, too This is a lot of fun for me, and it's not just because it's fun for me I like sharing this with you because when you guys comment and uh, you share your stories and you ask me questions sometimes I think I'm not qualified to answer that question but it's fun for me knowing that you trust me enough to ask the questions and then I get to be a better gardener uh, a better teacher a better host of the video channel uh, because you are trusting me with your time with your comments you encourage me and um, you help me grow I grow a garden you help me grow as a person so thank you very much connect with me on YouTube Facebook Twitter Instagram almost anywhere else just search for daddy curbs I'm there so that's it that's a wrap it's been kind of a crazy episode but I wanted to bring you into the garden and show you what's going on and uh, just catch up a little bit so leave your comments below I'll talk to you soon.